Welcome to the island of Shikoku. This may be the smallest of Japan's four islands, but merchants, artists, and pilgrims are busy going here and there. There is much to do for all these characters, and it's your job to use them as effectively as possible in Takedo Duo, a new two-player only game which was designed by Antoine Bauza and published by FunForge, who sponsors this video. Hey everyone, I'm Mike Murphy, the Brothers Murphy, and I am here with Board Game Geek. Well, I've got some artists who want to get to painting, but before we do that, Let's teach you how to play Takedo Duo. Takedo Duo is a two-player only game in which each player controls an artist, a merchant, and a pilgrim who each focus on different goals as they traverse the island of Shikoku. The pilgrim moves clockwise around the island paying respects to its many temples and visiting gardens, while the merchant acquires wares from the various mountain towns in the center of the island and sells those wares to the coastal towns. Artists wander the roads less traveled painting landscapes and gifting their art to folks. Each character can score points, which represents you getting the most out of your activities, which could lead to victory. Now it's about time to set off on our journey, so let's go over the setup. First take the board and place it in the middle of the table between the two players. Each player will take their three character boards, their meeples, ten painting tiles, and the two viewing pegs all belonging to their player color. The two viewing pegs go into the first two slots on your pilgrim board. Next take the ten painting tiles and shuffle them face down and place them onto the slots of your artist board. Going back to the central board, the eight boutique tiles should be shuffled and then placed in their indicated spaces throughout the board face up. Find the hot spring token and place it on its indicated space on the board. Take the 26 wear tokens and place them in the bag provided and set it off to the side of the board. Place three wave tiles randomly onto their indicated spaces on the board with either side showing. Each wave tile pertains to one of the character types. Take all gold coins and slabs and form a supply. Finally, each player will place their three characters onto the indicated space on their end of the game board. And that is the setup. Each round, the active player will roll three dice, each one pertaining to one of the character types. They choose one to use, which will allow their character to move according to their rules. The second player then chooses a die, and the start player will end up using the final die. So each character is only guaranteed one activation per round, split up between the two players. Each character has different ways of operating, so let's go over how a round plays out. First, the player whose turn it is rolls all three character dice. Each die will make one character move and each character moves differently and has different goals. The pilgrim figure moves clockwise around the edge of the island. When you take any character die, that character must move the full amount listed on the die. The pilgrim will move the indicated number of spaces and depending on what station they land on, they can use that station's effect. Be advised that the pilgrim can never share a space with another figure and if they were to end their movement on an occupied space, they simply move to the next empty space and can activate that station instead. Each time a pilgrim lands on a temple space, they advance their viewing peg one space on the matching track. Pilgrims are trying to visit as many temples as possible on their journey. Every garden they visit also moves their garden viewing peg one space space. At the end of the game, each player will get points equal to their furthest space reach on their temple viewing track multiplied by the space reached on their garden viewing track. The Pilgrim has three other station types they can visit. If they visit a coastal town, they immediately gain coins equal to the amount shown on that town's boutique token. When a hot spring is visited, that player gains the hot spring token either from the game board or from the player who currently possesses it. If you have the hot spring token and visit a hot spring station, nothing happens. Beginning with the next action, the hot spring token can be turned in immediately to use a selected die a second time. The hot spring cannot be used immediately upon receiving it. When using a die a second time, that character must still move the exact amount shown on the die and then follow all other normal movement rules. The last station a pilgrim can visit is the seashore. Here, a wave tile may be selected and attached to the appropriate character's board. This will give some added flexibility to that character, such as being able to move more or less than the die face shows, sell wares for additional profit, and more. Each character can have at most one wave tile, and if the board has no wave tiles and you visit the seashore, you will instead steal a wave tile from your opponent. The merchant moves along paths going between mountain and coastal towns. When they activate, you must move the full amount shown on the die, but be advised it is forbidden to move through the same spice twice on the same action. The merchant will acquire wares in the middle of the island at the mountain towns. They draw out wares equal to the amount shown on the mountain town. Be advised the merchant can only hold a limited amount of wares, and if ever they would go beyond their limit, they must choose any of their wares to give up to return to the bag. Each coastal town sells one type of ware at their boutique, and merchants can visit the coastal towns to sell as many of the matching wares as they like for the price listed on the boutique tile. Every time a player gains 10 coins or more, they immediately turn them in for a gold slab, which is placed under the merchant board and will earn them points at the end of the game for gold slabs collected. Finally, the artist moves off the beaten path and instead stays in the areas in between. When they move, they can go from area to area searching for paintings to paint and give away as gifts. When an artist paints, they will reveal face down painting tiles equal to the amount of other characters there are on spaces surrounding their area. Once you have some revealed tiles, your artist can gift paintings. To gift a painting, the artist must land on a region with the matching icon as on the painting tile. 
If the region matches, the leftmost painting tile is removed from the artist's board and points will be awarded at the end of the game based on how many painting tiles were gifted away. Players will take turns drafting dice and moving their characters as they try to achieve their goals. Each character has a way to trigger the end game, so the game can actually end one of three different ways. Once the game end is triggered, it's time to count up points and see who's the winner. The game can end one of three ways. If the pilgrim reaches the end of the temple or garden viewing track, if the merchant adds their sixth gold slab, or if an artist gifts their tenth painting. Once this happens, finish resolving any dice from the current turn, following the normal player order. Now it's time to add up points. Each player gains points for the space reached on the temple track multiplied by the space reached on the garden track. The merchant will gain points equal to the amount printed above the rightmost gold slab and the artist will receive points equal to the highest amount revealed from gifted paintings. The player with the most points wins. If there is a tie, the player with the most money left over wins and if a tie remains, both players share the victory. And that is how you play Takedo Duo. Choosing which character to move and how to use them offers many options each turn as seeing as each character doesn't move each turn, players may have to wait until they can finally use a die to visit a hot spring or to paint their next masterpiece. And if you'd like to learn even more about Takedo Duo, check out its page at BoardGameGeek.com. And until next time, I'm Mike Murphy and that is how you play Takedo Duo. Have a great day.